Yeah, great. So I, I guess uh, I'm sure we'll have more folks trickling in over the next few minutes, but maybe we can already get started just because we have a lot to cover today um, and we only have an hour and a half together to um, give share all of our updates from the last quarter and ask questions and chat about all of these important things so we can kick it off just a quick reminder as always this call will be recorded um the uh if you would like to ask a question please feel free to write it in the chat or raise your hand um and we can we can address those as they come up um Please remember to be respectful and kind to everyone who is presenting and sharing and asking questions. Um, and yeah, I will now hand it off to Abby, who will be running the call and sharing some important general announcements and updates to kick us off. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see all of your faces. Um, I'm going to share my screen in one second. Cool. All right. Can everybody see my screen? No, not yet, right? No. Google is lying to me, saying that it's sharing. Now we can. Oh, yep. I just I just stopped it just because I thought that I needed to restart it. Give me a second. Let's try that again. Okay, let me know when you guys can see it. I can see it. Great, thank you, Vincent. Okay, welcome everybody to this quarter's community call. Um, we're actually gonna kick it off with a uh, presentation because we have some really big updates that we're very excited um, to share with you guys. Um, so I can't see you. So if you have any questions, um, just feel free to speak up. So for this presentation, um, we're going to take like the first 10 minutes of the call to just walk through these updates. Um, so uh, specifically, we want to give an update on um, the brand evolution that has been in the works over the last couple of months since um, we're approaching a pretty big milestone. Um, and then we're actually gonna have a presentation from uh, the apiary team. Um, people who know the apiary team, I think we have Camille, Hannah, uh, Kristen, and Wendy on the call today. They've been doing some really awesome work that started with a grant and now have been working with the foundation to support this brand evolution. So they're actually gonna be taking the stage today and presenting um, a really big deliverable that we just completed. Um, and after that, we'll move uh, into the org updates um, where org leads will present um, their written updates on their progress and their happenings over the last quarter. So uh, to start just recapping of this, um, you know, the quarterly community call is that this is really supposed to be the touch point between our newly formed orgs. Uh, we have radical drips grants and the foundation, which has the three committees, operations, governance, and marketing. So we're going to be touching on announcements. We're going to be experimenting with new processes around updating on budget and progress. Um, and this is also a really good place to share open hires. So just a quick reminder about that. Um, so first, we wanted to kick off the call with an update, as I said, on the brand evolution that the Radical DAO has been going through over the last couple of months. Um, as you all know, this started with um, this discourse post. Well, it's actually been <laughs> been going for a while, but maybe officially kicked off with um, Sean's discourse post that we saw here back in February. Um, this is when we identified the need to evolve uh, Radical's brand beyond um, what has, is explicitly known as Radical Code Collab into something that can encompass basically what the project is becoming. And so previously, we've been known as Radical. Um, Radical has been you know, associated with our peer-to-peer -peer Code Collab product and technologies, but also the DAO. 
um, as that's how people know and identify our project as. Um, but it also represented DRIPS, which is you know the project that uh, started building peer-to-peer -peer fund sharing and splitting. Um, and so we're really excited to announce that we're actually going to be evolving the Radical DAO brand um, uh, and renaming our project to RadWorks. Um, RadWorks represents the DAO that supports Radical, um, our peer-to-peer -peer code collab technologies, um, and DRIPS, our peer-to-peer -peer fund sharing and splitting technologies. Um, and so RadWorks is basically the new you know, name that we are introducing to uh, better encompass what actually Radical, what we know as Radical, represented before. So um, this is a new name. It's coming with a new brand. And it's coming with, um, I can actually just show you, a new website, new docs, a new disco Discord, um, and a bunch of stuff that we're actually releasing next week. So um, I feel like everybody has been kind of aware that this process has been happening, but this is kind of like the first time that we're saying it out loud. Um, and the marketing team and um, you know other people within the foundation org and all the other orgs have been um, really instrumental in kind of like supporting this um, brand evolution take shape. Um, and it's really exciting to actually see it be executed and be ready to be released into the wild. So um, this is the alpha, I guess, for everybody on the call today, um, that this announcement is coming next week, right in time for ECC. Um, and now, you know, the Radical DAO, as we knew it, is actually going to be um, uh, named RadWorks, and that's how we're going to kind of relate to this project moving forward. So um, there's a lot of really exciting things here. Um, we're going to have time for um, question and answers for anybody who wants to ask questions about this process um, and how we, you know, basically the work that went into making it a reality. Um, but uh, before we do that, I think that a really important chunk of work that went into um, this project was actually the development of the RadWorks purpose statement, which we did um, in uh, collaboration with the Apiary team. Um, and so we actually have the Apiary team on the call today um, to give us a little presentation about what the process was to form that purpose statement, what that purpose statement is for people who haven't um, been able to um, uh, read it yet, um, and also uh, about a little bit of a ceremony that we're doing to kind of collectively ratify this purpose together. So um, without further ado, I'll pass it off to, I think Camille is going to be taking the mic and walking us through the RadWorks purpose statement um, and the process that we um, completed to get there. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing and hand it over to Camille. And then, as I said, after Camille's, um, after we're done presenting, we'll have some time for Q and A um, for anybody who has questions. So Camille. Thank you so much, Abby. Hi. Um, it's funny when like massive moments happen on Google Hangouts or Zoom. <laughs> um, as Abby is talking, I'm like looking at Sean's face and Abby's face and Shelby's face and a couple of the folks who participated in our um, research and interviews over the last couple of months and just wanted to, before I like share my screen and dive into a presentation, just wanted to say like, this was a massive amount of work and I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. This really, yeah. It doesn't quite get captured when you're just a bunch of floating heads, <laughs> that it's a big deal. <laughs> and I love all of the celebration emojis that are popping over my screen. So yeah, um, incredible, incredible job. So I'm gonna try to share my screen. Um, it's 7 a.m. and so welcome <laughs> to 7 a.m. Camille. Um, can everyone see this? Yep. yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm. Oops. Let's see if I can do this without losing you all. Cool. Can you still see the presentation? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Um. Yeah. So as Abby teed it up. Oops. Sorry. Um, as Abby teed it up, we're going to talk a little bit today, or I am, about um, the work that we've done around defining RadWorks purpose. 
Um, but before we do that, just briefly, I'm Camille. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Apiary, and we work with communities and organizations to help them build and improve their processes and structures to make collective decision-making easier and better so that groups of people like yourselves can collaborate in more generative ways. Um, and so in this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about what RadWorks purpose is and its origins and how we envision it playing a role within your ecosystem. To back up a tiny bit, um, and some of you participated in this, so thank you for your time, but our relationship with Radical started at the beginning of the year, we got a grant to do a qualitative um, research project into the community. Um, the output of that was this community insights report, um, which we will link to in the chat at the end of this presentation. But we spoke with over, I think, 23, Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong, but 23 members of the Radical community. And the goal there was really to understand what's What's happening? What are the challenges and opportunities? How are individual stakeholders representing, feel represented and are, how are they participating within the ecosystem? How do they identify with it? Um, and the outputs of that was, was this report. For the purpose of this conversation, there were two really important takeaways that we walked away from those conversations with in our analysis. One was that the community was struggling with this lack of a shared understanding of a global purpose. And by that, we mean really the reason that connects the token and DRIPS and Radical. We heard from a lot of folks, we understand our role within the DRIPS team. We understand our role within the Radical team. We get that there's this DAO transition happening and that there's a token, but we're really not sure what the connective tissue is collectively. Um, for, for these projects going forward. The other takeaway was that there was confusion and some tension around how decisions are being made within the ecosystem. Um, I think this is really common for organizations or communities or institutions as they evolve, they kind of reach a point of maturity where the emergent process of making decisions and having leaders sort of reach a, reaches a moment where it needs refinement to improve transparency and legitimacy. Um, and I think Radical at the beginning of the year really found itself in that moment. Um, this should all be said that all of this research was done sort of as pre and then post uh, the brand split decision was happening. And so a lot of what was surfaced in the report um, that you can take a look at was addressed also through that brand split. Um, and so one of the key recommendations, and when you look at the report, there's a lot of recommendations, but one of them was there really needs to be a purpose statement, a, a document that codifies the community's North Star, why these projects are being funded, what the founding purpose was, and, and how it all relates to each other um, now, and how it's intended to relate to each other over time. And so this is this point around like how do we how do we create a framework to really guide the decisions that we make? So we went through a process, which I'm going to talk about in a minute towards the end of this presentation, to really define what constitutes RadWorks and to memorialize what the community believes in and why the organization exists. As I said, it's really intended to serve as a North Star that the community can return to. Um, you're gonna see this language in a minute in the preamble, but we wrote that it was really around returning for clarity in times of change and challenge, confusion and conflict. So moments where it may not be clear what the right path is or direction, this simple language is intended to ground those conversations um, and orient the, the community over time. So the purpose statement itself is made up of three parts. We have a preamble, the foundational beliefs, and the purpose statement and its key focuses. The first part, the preamble, um, and we will link to all of this uh, so that you can review it uh, by yourselves as well. As I just said, um, 
This purpose is intended to serve to constitute RadWorks and memorialize what we and what you believe in and why the organization exists. The second is a set of foundational beliefs. These are the beliefs that went into defining the purpose, but also what really have already been being lived within the community. Part of the output of the research that we did was although there was some confusion around what this global or holistic purpose is behind RadWorks, these core beliefs came up consistently throughout our conversations, um, as did the vision that informs the, the purpose itself. And so this is the new purpose statement. The DAO funds new, resilient, permissionless technologies to cultivate internet freedom. We focus on funding and supporting the creation of censorship resistant and decentralized technologies that empower builders and creators to collaborate. We are committed to enabling individuals and communities to collaborate in the digital realm securely and freely. And there are a couple of things that I want to highlight about the language here. One is that what it does is defined in the purpose statement. So the DAO funds, right? The DAO funds these technologies. We were careful, this was a lot of debate as I will talk about um, in the process that we went through. Healthy debate, um, a robust conversation is probably a better way to put it. Um, but the goal here is really to say, this is a thing that we do. And so when there are decisions in future that could potentially deviate from this core purpose, it's grounded in, this is the thing, the verb that we said we are bringing ourselves together around. We um, locked everyone in a room for two and a half days in Switzerland. Oops, sorry about this. Um, to come up with, sorry. To come up with this purpose statement. So we held a two and a half day workshop with Abby, Angie, Sean, LA, and Alexi, uh, really with the goal of defining the purpose and the set of core values. The process that we undertook was really to open up what is the beyond what is the purpose what is the impact that the DAO seeks to have and then we worked back from this very broad lens around the internet and open source technology and the future of privacy um i feel like we kind of opened up every associated bucket and then zoomed out to ask the question what is radworks purpose or role within this impact um, and how do we how do we think about the decisions to fund radical and drips within the context of that intended impact the output of that workshop excuse me was a draft purpose statement that we went back and forth on for about two and a half weeks together in a google document really defining the language and iterating on the structure um, and after that group of people came to a place of consensus, we, the apiary team, then reached out to a handful of folks um, who we had spoken to previously within the research and did a set of community interviews. And the goal of those interviews was really to surface, what are the, where do you identify with this? Where are the tensions? What language resonates? Where are their issues? Um, and once we accumulated that feedback, we then went back and iterated on the language. And so the, the final language that I presented here is really the output of that iterative process. The last step is the ratification, um, which Abby is going to talk a little bit about in a minute, um, how that ratification process happens. The point of ratification is really when I, I spent a lot of time defining for organizations what their purposes were um, over the last five years. And there is, I think, a really important part that also gets lost in Google Hangouts and Zooms about identification over time with an imagined community. Why are you all together working on this? And how do you remind yourself of that and identify with that? And so the, this ratification process that really Abby and Alexi um, led uh, from a like an implementation perspective is intended to serve as a moment of ceremony. 
a moment of reading through it and and going through a very um i think lovely lovely ceremony that they've created um to ratify and identify with and ground your own and people in futures commitment and orientation and role within radworks abby i'm gonna pass it over to you to find you all um to talk a little bit about the ratification and then we can come back together and, and do some questions. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Camille. So yeah, let me just briefly share my screen as well. I'm gonna take over Camille. Um, so I can just show this cute little ceremony that Alexi and I hacked on last week um which is also a really fun dog food um moment so can everybody see my screen yes, yes. maybe okay i think it's live now is that correct yes great um so what we're looking at here is the radical app <laughs> that we know and love um, and last week we spent the time to actually um, set up our own Radworks community seed node, um, which is now hosting um, the Radworks governance repository. So as you know, this formerly lived on GitHub and it's where we host our governance manual um, and different important documentation that's relevant to the functioning of the DAO, uh, such as proposals, um, proposal templates, and so on. So we thought that this is um, actually the most relevant place for the purpose statement to live, uh, as the purpose statement due to the nature of its process um, spawning from Apiary's really awesome community um, focused uh, work, um, starting with um, you know, their, their grant project. Um, this is a community formed document, right? This is something that has spawned and grown um, with the contributions from our community. And so we want it to exist as a community governed document similar to our governance manual. So um, we are now hosting um, our purpose statement in a markdown file on the seed node. Shelby dropped the link in the chat. Um, and this is where you can read through um, the full uh, purpose statement and the preamble. Um, uh, and we have also, um, we sorry. We would like to also have this be the place where we um, host the ratification of this purpose statement. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the file, you'll see a very pretty garden, um, very you know OG Radica Alpha Alpha days, um, and below that we are collecting signatures. Um, you can see I have ratified this purpose statement with my name and our you know uh, well known seedling symbol. Um, and so anybody can ratify this document by submitting a patch to this repository um, with your name and with your seedling. So um, for people who know how to use Radical, it's again as simple as submitting a patch. But um, for everybody else who maybe hasn't interacted with Radical before, I've put together a little onboarding guide. I've written some documentation with Alexi's help. Um, that let's see how it holds up, um, that I will be sending out via email to everybody on this call um, and within the ecosystem, uh, which is a step-by-step -step guide for how to ratify the RadWorks purpose with Radical. Uh, so this includes um, installing Radical, um, creating your own project, um, creating a new branch, submitting the change, opening the patch, um, and ratifying it through there. So this is the step-by-step -step guide. As I said, I will be sharing this via email um, with you all this week. And then next week when we release um, and announce RadWorks to the world, um, it will also be available to anyone in our community who is interesting, interested in ratifying the purpose as well. So uh, again, just a really um, 
I think a really nice dog fooded <laughs> uh, ceremony um, uh, for all of us to opt into. Um, and if you have any trouble with the guide, um, I think me and ideally the radical team who knows this better than me will be able to to support with that. So um, that's our ratification process. Um, hope that people uh, are excited maybe to add their names to the purpose and hopefully soon um, within the next couple of months we'll see that uh, list growing longer and longer with uh, names of people who share our passion for cultivating internet freedom so cool um so yeah i think we can just pause there that was a lot of information i'm sure there might be a couple of questions we've allocated a couple of minutes before going into the org updates uh, to answer them. So, um, and a big thank you to Camille and the APRE team for all the amazing work that they have done in this process. I think it's been an amazing facilitated process. And personally, I'm really, really, really excited about where we're going with RadWorks. And I hope people are able to share that um, excitement as well. So yeah, I'll open up the floor to any questions. Lots of love in the chat. I mean, in the emojis, I'm appreciating that. <laughs> um, we're not officially like announcing anything like online yet, right? This is no. just like a community call announcement. Yeah, our tentative date um, pending our marketing sync tomorrow will be July 10th. So that is next week. Uh, I think that we're in a good place to move ahead with that. Um, so we will keep you all um, updated. Um, and that, again, we'll, be, we'll talk a little bit more in the org updates about the different changes that are landing, because there's some stuff that interact the way that we work, such as our Discord. Um, but that's when um, the, uh, all of the branding will be changed, the names, the domains, and all of that stuff. Um, Jason, to answer your question, the token stays the same. That's kind of why we leaned into um, including RAD in the name of the project, is that we wanted to keep everything the same. Um, so RAD remains, nothing changes about the token. We're updating um, all of our exchanges with um, different copy that better describes the role of RAD in the governance of the RadWorks ecosystem. So um, that's the only thing that will be changed. Also, our logo stays the same, but Brandon has done a really, really, really awesome job uh, to put together a really fun new, we call it cool internet kid vibe, um, and that you'll also be able to see on the website. And for people who actually wanna scroll through the website, it's live at radworks.org. Just please don't share it with anybody yet. <laughs> And amazing work to, again, the marketing team. They'll chat about um, their updates as well on kind of making this all make sense. Um, and I think we're all really excited about the packaged product that we're going to be shipping next week. It's going to be a really huge milestone. Cool. So if there's no other questions, I'll wrap it up there. We can move into um, our quarterly org updates. Thank you everybody for taking the time and hearing us and the Apiary team out and Apiary, thank you guys for joining again. Um, awesome, so let's pass it off to um, the Radical Org to kick off our quarterly org updates. Vinton? Hi. Um, so yeah, Alexi is taking some well-deserved time off. So I'll be presenting for the code collaboration team. Um, share my screen. So yeah, he put a, together a presentation and I'll just like run through it. Um, but it is up on Radical Community, which is what I'm sharing now. Uh, can you folks see that? Yes. I need a verbal. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so um, to start off with like kind of general announcements and updates, um, we've been pretty busy on like uh, the the kind of brand. Um, so we've did the public launch. Um, they uh, launched the new website, and um, 
using the like uh, Space Invaders logo. Uh, so there's a bit of branding work done in there, which looks a lot of fun. Um, we've been using the Heartwood protocol ourselves. Um, so we've, we're using like patches to submit changes. And so far there's 130 patches merged, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, clearly a lot of work going on. Um, and yeah, we've made it easier to, well, hopefully it's easier to install uh, the native binaries. Um, I guess Abby can attest to that, uh, setting up the Radworks um, repo. Um, exciting news uh, about a new CI team that Yorgos is um, heading off, uh, which is really cool. It's a cool step towards like uh, a fuller experience with uh, the Radical Code Collaboration stack. Um, and then some kind of on the on the outskirts uh, where or some of our team have decided to take part in conferences. Um, so I believe Alexi is talking at this alter alternative ecologies um, conference and I believe Eric and Sebastian will be doing a kind of uh, workshop uh, using the Heartwood uh, protocol and the RAD CLI to do some fun things at Protocol Berg. Um, and I believe we're going to try and meet up there as well. Uh, so a few of us are getting tickets to that conference. So if anyone else is around Berlin around that time, it'd be fun to catch up. Um, regarding our uh, quarterly objectives and updates on them, um first i'll go through like trying to reach github feature parity um so yeah like i said we're using our own patches um but at the moment it's very much like kind of uh similar like git workflow create a branch do your work and then submit it um so we've really streamlined that where uh it's essentially uh, Git tooling that does all of this for us. Um, so we can do like a Git push and make a patch, um, which is amazing. Uh, it's not like a four step process anymore. Um, but we want to, at the moment, we're reviewing using Zulip, um, but we want to like move towards being able to easily review using our own tooling. Um, so that. Uh, that involves like being able to, to have inline comments on code, being able to have discussion threads and figuring out how to like display this in web in the CLI or in, and in the TUI. Um, but lots of exciting things there. Um, uh, also the code hosting and browsing is looking great. Um, lots of good work from the, the web and interface team. Um, I'm generally like using the, the nodes website to review code and um, it looks great. Um, as I said, inline comments are still in the works and this kind of like also pertains to issues. Uh, we're not really using our kind of like issues feature yet um, because we just don't have the support there um, for making it a good experience yet. But that's definitely on the chopping block. Um, but however, uh, uh, the TUI work is looking really great. Um, uh, Eric's been working really hard on that, uh, seeing lots of good screenshots and updates uh, from him regularly from week to week. Uh, as I mentioned, the CI uh, conversation has started and Jorgos and his team are taking up uh, some of the work on that. Uh, which is really exciting to hear, and there's been lots of discussion on Zulip. Um, we're kind of skimming on fully fledged identities by having uh, aliasing features, so being able to uh, alias uh, a person's machine with like Finto Haps or Cloudhead or Rudolphs, and having that kind of uh, be usable in the web experience as well. Um, and then also just making 
the node management, like the RAD uh, CLI stuff, just a lot more streamlined, usable, figuring out like, or using it and finding bugs and making the experience a lot smoother, um, which actually doesn't really have an equivalent um, for GitHub because it's a platform. Um, so yeah, there's, we we note we note this because um, it's extra work in co uh, in comparison to like trying to reach feature parity. So it's kind of that work that comes in and um, takes away from stuff that's more visible, like the patch and issue work. Um, now that we're using it so much, uh, it's led to a lot of like uh, finding bugs and fixing bugs and you know like waterfall iteration almost. Um, so there's been lots of good work on the protocol. Uh, it's now multiplexing, which just means it can um, serve many requests at once. Um, replication has been stable, which is probably music to everyone's ears after the, the experience with uh, the first version of Link. Um, but uh, there's still room to improve there, and um, we're uh, trying to like flesh out a more controlled version of replication. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned in the general updates, there's like new website has been launched. Um, Cloud is taking uh, to Twitter and uh, announcing lots of updates there and uh, getting people excited. I think we've seen some uptick in like people coming into the Zula asking questions, trying out the um, CLI um, and uh, holding out on a blog for now. Um, but yes, I do remember um, chatting about possibly being more like uh, technical blogging oriented in the future um, when we were talking amongst ourselves. Um, for the roadmap update, uh, I'll start off at the bottom. So we've postponed radical identities. As you said, we kind of like skirted around it with aliases, but I think it's such a big topic that uh, we want to get the core experience done before we get into anything a bit more hairy around identities and um, uh, uh, identity sovereignty. Um, we're yeah focused on moving all our stuff to radical so being able to do issues being able to do patches um uh, moving the rest of the repos over we're mostly um exchanging patches uh on hardwood um but the kind of like radical git and radical interface they're still living on github um we're uh, starting off on the Radical CI uh, research and hopefully get some like uh, MVPs going with some basic workflows, uh, improvements to the cobs. So as we use them more, we're kind of like figuring out uh, some of the limitations or things that we might have, uh, assumptions that we might have gotten wrong and like improving on those and also getting uh, versioning in so that um, as we upgrade those, objects um there will be some compatibility across the network uh overhauling of the brand um so uh we've moved that from q2 to q3 but i, I guess there is a good start in that um we've launched websites and all that kind of good stuff and figured out our like branding logo um community seed note also uh moved from q2 um yeah uh, i guess that's just it's kind of insular at the moment um because we want to stress test it ourselves before getting people to post their projects up um so it's it's only uh, our projects that are being hosted uh before we kind of get other people's projects in there um but then again everyone is able to host their own node if they give it a try um we're still lacking on documentation um it's kind of hard to write something in stone about documentation before uh we're while we're changing so much of the experience and what we're doing but 
as we build out the CLI, we also always have like examples and use them as tests to make sure they work. And it is a good source for um, uh, getting to use the, the CLI and what it's capable of. And then also uh, NAT traversal. So um, that's just to like improve, uh, I guess, network connectivity across. And that'll be important as like we launch a seed node and other people launch their seed nodes and being able to connect across the internets. Um, and then finally, touch on timeline and budget. Uh, we've been hiring aggressively. Um, I think we've had someone new or starting uh, on the user experience side of things and working with the web team. We also have, uh, we've been talking to someone who uh, used to work on the Linux kernel. Um, so there's lots of exciting things on that front. Um, so apparently this has affected our budget, but uh, we should be, it should, it should, uh, should be sufficient until the year end and then we can reevaluate. Um thank you for listening. Have you got any questions? Yes, Shelby. Hi. Uh yeah, thanks for the presentation, um, Fintan. Um, you mentioned just now that there were, that you folks use like examples to show like how you can use the CLI in different ways or best use it. Um, yeah. Are those examples documented anywhere or like where, is there like a place where yeah. people can like find them to look at them? Yorgos has beat me to it or aided me, I should say really. Um, he's linked the oh, yeah. examples there living in the, in the repo itself. So. Um, they're generally named named well, so it's like, yeah, example there is like rad clone, and it's like, this is how you clone a repository. Yeah, super helpful. Sweet. Thank it's you. good to hear, Abby. No problem. Yeah, Ellie, what's up? Hey, uh, good to see you, and thank you for the really nice update. Uh, question for me. You know, yeah. looking back, like, and maybe just thinking about now, what is the biggest challenge that you as a team face? It's not you're progressing a lot in all fronts, but is there anything that is the biggest worry at the moment? Biggest worry? Um, I would say, like, the, yeah, keeping that stability. Um, so making sure that like we don't have too many breaking changes um but I, I guess we we are still very much in beta um and then also just making sure that we do subsume the whole github experience into into the rad cli um because like we have we have done well to move off of github and exchange patches but at the moment, we do definitely use uh, Zulip as a crutch to uh, form discussions for patches and issues, um, uh, and being able to like track tasks is a little bit harder when you're when you're relying on a on a messaging forum. Um, I would say those are probably the big two that I notice, um, but I would uh, recommend anyone else working on the team to uh, chime in as well. Thank you. No problem. Expensive champagne. <laughs> Anybody else? Or will I hand it off? Going once, going twice. All right. Hey. <laughs> um, do you have maybe you already said something about this but do, does the team have like a some kind of plan for getting people to use it including yeah. like other teams within radworks like drips that was it's an interesting question and it came up uh during our team call um and um 
I at least remember my input where I was kind of like worried what like finding the right time for getting people to use it because we kind of suffered from that in the with the upstream scenario um and I think we came to like a general agreement that we'd be happy to show it to friends as soon as we're able to like uh be able to like use patches properly um being able to discuss things have inline comments and that kind of stuff um at the moment we'd feel a little bit uh, hesitant to even recommend it to friends maybe less hesitant to recommend it to drips um yeah i'd say like we'd, we'd be happy to support like uh, drips as like an internal um uh, a client um and give good support there but uh they'd also have to like figure out their own workflow of like how do we um how do we comment on patches that are coming in how do we form our discussions and um figure out like how can they successfully use what's there what's minimally there if that makes sense yeah makes sense also good shout on the upstream situation yeah. um yeah abby also asked what do you feel like you need to support adoption um as in like did i did, was my answer about like patches and commenting suffice there or is there like another aspect that you'd like to touch on uh yeah i think that it sufficed i mean the answer that i heard from you is that there's like technically some more things that you feel like you need to introduce yeah. before yeah. like diving into adoption but um if there's any other needs that have like service i see that now we've moved like documentation for example and like user experience of the app into q3 so it seems like maybe putting energy into there is like also um uh i think kind of also in answering this question as well but is there anything mm. else that I just feel like you need that um, uh, that could spawn into new hires or support from the foundation or to support that. Mm. Um, nothing that comes to mind, at least for me. But um, again, like I, I implore everyone else on the team to <laughs> chip in if they have any thoughts. Yeah, one idea there would be um working with the radical team to come up with the milestones themselves so essentially mm -hmm. saying okay by this date we can we're working with three external clients to do this sort of action right which is, and that action is not them fully adopting radical across all of their right work sure, that they're doing yeah. in terms of code collaboration something much more limited but it still make gives us progress in terms of getting external feedback so we could we yeah, could we yeah. could partner with you to come up with what those things are. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and last comment here is that um, I remember back in the original um, org proposal uh, that made its way through governance, um, there was a list of metrics that um, were stated will be used to internally track growth. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it could actually be good to reflect on those in these quarterly calls. I mean, I think there's such as like numbers, number of repositories published, number of nodes online, um, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, and so maybe this wasn't the quarter for it since it was like really focused on like stabilization. But um, I think it'd be really great to see um, those metrics reflected on and, and even kind of like presented in this in the next quarterly community call. Um, and yeah. yeah, as you said, Sean, probably building a plan around those metrics specifically is like a really good next step. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Should we wrap there? Yeah. All righty. Thanks Perfect. for the great questions. Thank you so much. Um, awesome. So I'll pass it off to Drips next. Are you presenting, Ellie? Great. Yes. <laughs> Can you hear me okay now? Yeah. Great. Uh, good to see you. Uh, yes. So, uh, Drips update for Q2. Um, so, I believe that the last time we presented in front of all of you, um, it was the time that actually we had just deployed the Drips v2 smart contracts on mainnet. 
uh, which was a big milestone. The next big milestone for us was actually bringing the app experience, uh, you know, on par with what we, what we, you know, what we want to deliver to to deliver to users, and publicly announce that. And um, I'm happy to announce that our biggest milestone for the quarter is accomplished. Uh, so next Saturday on the 15th of July. Uh, we are publicly announcing uh, drips, uh, both smart contracts and the application. And, you know, there's uh, a lot of things going on there. Uh, so we will announce that at a conference called Funding the Commons, which is focused on funding the Commons uh, and public goods uh, that Protocol Labs is organizing. So I will be giving a presentation there. Uh, in addition, um, there's a lot of stuff that have been lined up for that. Uh, there's uh, some long form content with regards to dependency funding with DRIPS and how does that mechanism relate to the rest of the public goods initiatives on the Web3 space. There will be a uh, Twitter uh, uh, thread. Um, they, uh, there will be um, an event that we're doing in Paris as well with Ceramic on Monday. Additionally, on Monday the 17th, we're presenting at Filling Point, which is another event focused on public goods. Uh, so lots of work has been going on behind the scenes for that. Um, we will zoom deeper on the application. I want Jason actually, I asked Jason to do a demo so you can actually get um, you know, to see the thing, which is always a lot more exciting than uh, me talking about things. Uh, but before that, I just want to say a massive thank you to the marketing team, specifically Becca, Sean, and Alexa, for being good partners to us as we're navigating this uh, this, this this public launch. It feels like um, you know most of the pieces are coming together. Um, I do not have a uh, big worry. I'm actually very excited for for getting this out. Uh, so. Yeah, maybe I'll pass the ball now to Jason to see so he can show you um, some of the the experiences that um, are included in this announcement, and then I'll take the I'll I'll continue the presentation to just talk through some more specifics with regards to you know our quarterly objectives, what's coming next, budgets, and and all of those things. So, Jason, are you ready? Yes. Hello. Hello. Cool. I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay. I'm sharing mine. Can you all see? We can. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can. Amazing. Cool. Okay. So before I jump into this, a uh, quick disclaimer, like this is still very much pre-production software, so it might break horribly. Um, if that happens, I told you so. Um, <laughs> uh, let's hope it doesn't. Okay. So uh, first of all, like uh, this is kind of a demo build of the new dependency funding experience in the Drips app. Um, for those of you who already know the Drips app and use it already, um, you will find this screen very familiar. Uh, and just quickly to say, uh, none of the kind of um, existing generic streaming functionalities and like, you know, just stream any ERC-20 to any Ethereum address is going away. It's all still there. Uh, we're just building a lot of stuff on top. Uh, so that off the way at first. Um, but what you see here at the side is a bunch of new kind of top level navigation targets like projects and drip and profile, which is quite exci exciting. Uh, so basically like the whole dependency funding experience has kind of two kind of types of users, right? Like one is maintainers of projects, like on like open source projects on GitHub. And the other are funders, like people that want to just, you know, financially support open source projects. Um, and those are what these kind of two tabs are for. So on the projects tab, I as a maintainer of an open source project or multiple projects uh, can see the projects I've claimed on Drips, uh, more on that later. And I can also see the earnings I have gotten from these projects. And then as a funder, as in someone who wants to support open source projects, I can see my so-called drip list, again, more on that later uh, on the drip list tab. And then lastly, the profile. Uh, we already had public profiles before. Um, now, in addition to showing your streams, they also show the person's claim projects and drip list. So all of this is public for everyone to see. So let's start with a scenario of assuming that I'm a uh, maintainer of some open source project on GitHub, and I'm actually looking for funding. Uh, so I would like to now claim my project on GitHub, uh, on Drips. Uh, so in order to do that, I can go over here to projects and then claim project. And what you now see is the claim project flow. So uh, how does this work? Uh, the first thing I have to do is I have to go ahead and grab the URL for my GitHub repository. Um, by the way, like GitHub is just the first um, source we call them. Uh, there are others coming like GitLab and Radical, hopefully, if we can figure out how to do that. Uh, so GitHub is really just what we're starting with. 
So what I do is I just go over here. I created an empty test repo, as you just saw. Um, I paste the link, I submit. And now the first thing you see here is that I don't have any claimable funds. So basically, like one of the, let's say, innovations of DRIPS, <laughs> dependency funding, is that funders can actually go and fund projects before they claimed, like before they even know about DRIPS, basically. Uh, which is pretty cool because what this means is that you don't have to chase people for like ethereum addresses or anything uh, you don't have to ask them to set up wallets uh, you just kind of commit some money uh, it goes to them already on the drips network and then like this creates a very strong incentive basically for them to come and claim their project uh, so of course this is a demo project that's empty so i don't have any claim funds unfortunately if i did uh, i would see here kind of a breakdown of all the individual esc20 tokens that have already been donated to me uh, to, to this project rather and also real-time uh, USD fiat estimate of their value. So let's go ahead and continue. Uh, first thing I have to do is connect my wallet, which I already did. Um, and then this is where it gets really interesting. So how do you actually claim a project uh, for DRIPS? Uh, you create a so-called funding.json file, uh, which is a, a thing that Igor has come up with, Igor and Manuel actually, uh, which is super cool. Uh, so basically, uh, you just add this file to the main branch, uh, just in the like, root of the repository. And you can see we have a little drips namespace here, then a namespace by the network. This is just on testnet, so we're using Sepolia right now. And then we have this own by key, which is just an Ethereum address, uh, which happens to be the same one that is now kind of trying to claim access to this project. Um, and basically, the way it works is whatever address is in here has access to control this project on drips, meaning uh, collecting funds, uh, changing the routing of money, uh, changing the metadata, all that kind of good stuff. So we've made it really easy to create this file. I can just click here, and it opens up uh, a new file editor on GitHub, and all I have to do is commit the change, and that's it. And you can see now in this entry repository, we now have just the funding.json file. Now I just need to confirm that I did that and verify now. Uh, the app actually just checked if the file is there and if the address is right. So we can see that it's now linked to the project. Now, next, what I'm doing is I have to decide where do the funds go that people donate to this project. And first, on a high level, you kind of ask to configure how much is going to maintainers versus dependencies. And then later, you actually set up who these maintainers and dependencies are. So I can just drag this around to any percentage I want. Uh, if I want, I can do, you know, like 100% dependencies if I'm not actually looking for funding, uh, which is cool. And all of this is transparent, of course. Uh, but let's say I want to keep like 55% of funds for the maintainer team and then the rest goes to my dependencies. Continue. Uh, now the first thing I do is uh, define who are the maintainers of the project. So this would basically just be Ethereum addresses that uh, are involved in, you know, maybe the core team of the project or something like that. Uh, by default, it's just 100% uh, the address that is currently connected. So I'm just going to keep it at that. And then here's where it gets interesting. This is where I put my dependency. So now, as before, I can basically take any GitHub project, no matter whether they have already claimed or not, and just add it to my dependency list. Uh, I can add, in total, up to 200 maintainers and dependencies for one project. Um, and you can see here that uh, it's now added. This project was already claimed. I'm just going to go ahead and add one more. Created a lot of repositories on GitHub in the past few days. <laughs> well, uh, and you can see that you can basically do any split you want. So we have a bunch of tools down here to like make it easy to quickly build specific distribution. So let's say I want to do like 75 and then give the rest to this project. Uh, you can very easily manage this list. Um, and you can also add actually Ethereum addresses as dependencies as well. It doesn't have to be GitHub projects. So let's stick with that. Cool. Uh, so now the last thing is I get a randomly assigned emoji, which is actually quite dangerous because there are some weird emojis to get assigned randomly. So we're going to change that. <laughs> um, but the point is you can choose any emoji you want. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and choose a water droplet, make it blue. So we have a little drips theme going on here. Um, and you can customize, as you can see, the, both the color and the emoji that you want. Uh, now, the rest of the screen is just some kind of review. So I see again the table of funds, which is unfortunately nothing. Um, and then also here, the specific splits I've set up. Um, and now, basically, what happens when I click Confirm and Wallet is two transactions. The first one um, actually triggers the Drips Oracle uh, to go ahead and actually fetch the funding.json file, like see if it's there, right? 
And we do this with Chainlink. Um, again, like huge shout out to Manuel and Igor for figuring, figuring this all out. Um, but basically it looks at the funding.json file, puts it on chain, and then whatever address is in there gets um, access to uh, this particular project on Grips. So now we're basically waiting for that to finalize. Um, I really hope this works because sometimes the subgraph on testnet just stops ingesting events for like 20 minutes. So I hope that didn't just happen. Let's see. <laughs> It usually takes like 10 seconds. I think it might, it might have happened. <laughs> oh well. Um, okay. Anyway, so what would happen is I would have to send another transaction to actually finalize the claiming process, um, and then it would bring me on the project profile. Uh, so luckily, I anticipated this and already claimed something before. Uh, so we can just go ahead and open that project. So after claiming the project, uh, you basically get a project profile that looks like this. Um, so you can see all the metadata is applied. Uh, we have here two sections, the splits that I said, um, available for anyone to see. All this is, of course, public. Anyone can see it, and it also gets um, indexed on Google. Um, and then up here, we have the supporters, uh, which are currently none. Uh, so I would actually like to change that. So the last thing I want to show you is how I, as a funder, can support a project or multiple projects like this one. And that is what drip lists are for. So you can think of a drip list basically as just a list of projects that you want to send funds to. Um, and that's kind of it. <laughs> it just sends funds, like it splits them to a, a list of different projects. So I can get started by clicking Create Your Drip List here with this particular project. And this just autofills um, the repository URL. And now, again, I get the same kind of list editor that I, I saw earlier, and I can add up to 200 different projects or Ethereum addresses as a funder. And then what I'm asked to do is basically set up the recurring support stream to this particular drip list. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, again, I can stream any ERC20, even custom ones. I'm going to go ahead and select this test token here. I'm going to go ahead and stream, I don't know, 10 uh, per month. Uh, this token is called Weenus. We didn't do that. <laughs> It's some like um, generic test ESC20, so apologies for that. Um, then I need to choose uh, the initial top up, like how much of this token I want to actually like move to my Drips account straight away. Um, I'm going to go ahead and top up for six months. And then on the review screen here, I get just you know the token stream rate, initial top up, until when this top up will last as well. And then if I confirm the wallet, we will again have to wait for a transaction. <laughs> but this one should be quick. This will actually create the drip list, apply all the metadata, and apply the splits. Um, and the drip list actually is an NFT, which is pretty cool. So in the future, you can imagine that you can will be able to have multiple of these lists. And we also want to make them kind of transferable. We also want to make it possible for people to fund other people's drip lists. So you know, have a whole social aspect. So it's going to be quite exciting. Okay, I don't think we have. Let's see if this works. Um, again, if the subgraph doesn't work right now, then this is probably also going to fail. Uh, okay, it seems to have worked. Yes, great. Did it? No, it didn't. Yeah, sorry. The subgraph just died like right in time for the demo. That's amazing. Uh, and I can't actually show this because I don't have a drip list. That is a shame. Um, this probably doesn't have one either. It does. Okay, thank God. Okay, so this is what the drip list looks like. It also shows up in the profile. Uh, so this is a pretty boring one because there's only one project, uh, but you can see that you have you know your drip list here. Anyone can see it on your profile. Uh, you have the continuous support down here. You can edit the stream, pause it, delete it, whatever you want. You can also, of course, edit your list at any time, change the projects on it, and then you also as a okay, this project has been deleted, but on the uh, project page you show up as a supporter, um, which is cool. Okay, I believe that that is pretty much it. So thanks a lot for listening. Very nice. I feel like that's, that's also like the first time I've seen that like entire demo at one time, even though I'm literally working on this. And that's so cool. <laughs> so cool. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I love um, I love all the automation and I put it in the comments there, but the fact that we're sort of like making all of this transparent and creating a social forcing function 
that shows everyone what they're doing when they first set it up, I think is awesome. And hopefully it creates good network effects. Thank you. Thank you. We're also very excited to be saying this work and yeah, like a lot of a lot of work has gone from the team. Um, yeah, in all of those different experiences. Um, I think this is a good segue to say a few words about the process we've been running for the last three months. So um, we really um, we really decided to take a uh, more user oriented approach. So what we would do is effectively we would like, you know, we came up with the first demo and then we had user interviews with different people and then we would collect feedback and then, you know, like incorporate and then do that again and and i want to say thank you to to you boredom to yorgos that is in in that call both of your feedback was super helpful also we got feedback from optimism protocol labs uh protocol guild the number of people that effectively you know have been saying what they like and what they didn't like um about about what we're working on and um yeah that's that's one of the things that um i've been personally very happy about because the year before we're very much in our own vision, very isolated from the world. Now it seems that we have managed to actually find this new rhythm where we're actually building, you know, with with users and with with people with direct feedback in mind. Um, and yeah, I think that has been going very well. Uh, let me share my screen um, again. Um, yeah, um, going back to the specifics, um, something that you're not going to see yet, uh, but Brandon has done a fantastic job on a new landing page that I think for the first time ever, it really captures the essence, this graph of, you know, funders and recipients and people redistributing funding uh, for Drips. So there's a new landing page that is coming. Um, yeah, and then um, uh, what else? Um, Taking a little bit the more analytical view, um, the objective that we had for the quarter, the one is, of course, the most important one by far, was to publicly launch Drips V2 contracts application. It's still in green, although technically, you know, we're announcing it in the 15th of July, which is Q3, but I'm cheating a little bit and, you know, made it green because mission accomplished. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so as I said before, we are announcing this uh, next Saturday at Funding the Commons, but there will be, you know, activity the weekdays as well before and after. There's quite a lot that has been planned for that. Uh, the second objective that we actually decided to drop was um, was to integrate social linking. So the idea here was to be able to show that, okay, you know, this address is associated with this, um, you know, like Twitter profile and things like that, where you can have multiple verified uh, socials. Uh, for now, there's not much. There's only this, you know, the GitHub flow, which is in a way a form of social linking, but it's not exactly what we're intending to do. So I made it, I made it red here. Uh, the reason why we decided to push this back was because we took a very MVP, like, you know, let's not build anything if we don't have confidence that it's needed just for us to showcase the essence of this product. Uh, so that's why we deprioritized this for Q3. Um, the third thing that uh, we we had here was to research multi-chain governance options uh, in order to deploy Drips V2 in more EVM networks. Just for context here, um, Drips V2 is already deployed on, on Ethereum mainnet. Of course, we're very keen on deploying that in multiple uh, EVM networks like Optimism, Arbitrum, CK Sync, and all of those just because, you know, transaction costs are much lower. But unfortunately, we're dealing with a problem that pretty much everyone in the industry is dealing with, which is um, our DAO, which is the, the Radworks DAO uh, that controls the trip smart contracts, obviously doesn't have presence in any of those different layer twos. Uh, and we want the governance of the TRIPS smart contracts not to be controlled by a multi-stake or, you know, an EOA, obviously. So we ideally want the, 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 the governance uh, of the DAO basically to control the smart contracts. But in order to do so, oh, and my camera died, um, sorry for that. Uh, but <laughs> in order to do so, um, you know, there's no way yet to do this in a trust minimized environment. M many bigger teams are actually researching this, like Uniswap and a number of those much bigger organizations. So what we decided to do is simply wait. Again, we feel that we can demonstrate the idea of dependency funding with DRIPS on Ethereum layer one, get some funders in 
to participate in this, which is the bigger goal we have for Q3. And then, you know, use that time to actually figure out how we want to go about deploying to multiple EVM networks in the spirit, again, of like very tight um, product prioritization. Um, the fourth and the fifth thing, um, basically, uh, here the fourth and the fifth goal we had was fourth one was to to build and ship continuous dependency funding this is the experience that you just saw from brandon so this is completed um and then the fifth one we have was actually to build what we used to call awesome lists and i don't know if you noticed that but in the demo we did effectively we unified these two concepts right so you have the possibility to just you know specify a bunch of dependencies but we're doing this into one unified list for you uh, where effectively you can create any of those lists and you can call them whatever, right? Like, you know, you can have a list that is all your dependencies if you want to, or some of them, but you can also, you know, have a list that it's, you know, your favorite privacy related projects on Ethereum or whatever, right? So, so effectively we unified four and five and we believe that we have accomplished both, uh, which makes me happy. Uh, yeah, and then the last thing is the, we had a goal here that if we would have shipped earlier, then we would have already started to iterate on some of the core experiences based on user feedback. We're not there yet, although all of our process have been based on the user interviews as I said before. So I still made it red, given that, you know, we've been super focused on the MVP and just shipping this and announcing that, and that's what we're doing. There's gonna be a lot more iteration, a lot more policy same um uh in q3 of course after after the announcement um with regards to uh team budget and other things that might be relevant for this group uh so with regards to the team there's no change nothing has changed we haven't hired anyone we were intending to hire anyone we fully staff and we you know happy to be working together as a team for a while now so there's no change there and then with regards to the budget we actually are below budget which is Good news. Uh, there are two reasons for that. The one is, um, you know, more of a tactic. We decided not to prioritize an additional audit yet. We have the budget to conduct an additional audit, as you know, more money hopefully will be flowing to the to the protocol. But we decided to wait for that. Uh, and then the second thing is that our budget is slightly lower than what we're expecting, uh, simply because a number of contributors have been, you know, on vacation in June. Uh, so, but it's it's fairly yeah fairly relevant. Um, one more thing that I think it's important to mention with regards to ops related things that we have a new Discord as well. Uh, this is something that we haven't really publicly announced. It will be now part of the bigger announcement that we're doing. But if you're watching this, uh, this, 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 um, this presentation, you know, there is a new, uh, Discord where we've been, you know, like working there every day. So, uh, and it's public already. We just haven't made any, like we haven't made buzz around this and it's, you know, well structured or let it, it it feels like a nice um like a nice home and and honestly through the ex the experience of working in that it felt good with regards to being more focused you know like having just focused conversations on drips felt very very good for us and i don't know how the radical team felt with julie but it feels like this is you know like helping uh rather than you know taking away this this form of separation uh yeah that's mostly it. like uh so what's coming next the most important thing that's coming next is uh you know we have a uh, code freeze for uh all related stuff on monday um uh and then we basically going on a week of extensive te testing uh just before the 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 announcement uh so that's the immediate next thing and then we want to um announce um announce um the the protocol and then as part of the announcement uh one thing that uh we've been working on is is a proposal and this is a proposal that i intend on publishing to the radworks DAO, and this is a proposal effectively to fund a selected group of dependencies of the different radworks orgs using the drips protocol and this is something that i've been in contact with different org leads already uh so uh yeah so thank you all for your support ideas questions uh and all of that uh so yes expect the proposal from us uh beginning the beginning of next week and you know if this proposal passes i hope that we will see your support for doing for doing that but yeah more in the forum for that um yeah and then um i'll stop sharing my screen um and then maybe say a few words about the future with regards to q3 obviously for us right now it's all about the announcement it's all about you know getting the word out getting feedback um and then um 
yeah putting actually some capital to 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 work here uh, to fund to fund the public goods that actually making our work possible and testing this thing that we built and then um the next step for us with regards to adoption is is we basically want by the end of Q3 to have two or three more organizations, ideally either Web3, well-funded Web3 organizations or DAOs, uh, to basically try doing the exact same thing that we want to do, effectively funding their dependencies using using the DRIPS protocol. And then again, you know, try to learn from that exercise before we actually, you know, try to like onboard a lot more people, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the biggest um, the biggest next thing. So a lot of work on adoption. Of course, there's a lot of work on policing that will follow. We've been really hacking together to just meet the deadline. So after that, I'm sure that there will be quite a lot of work on the product to just you know, uh, yeah, like put some bring like do some good 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 old maintenance, I guess. Um, and then um, the last uh, first I want to say is that um, in this process we've been uncovering a lot more subtle problems um with regards to funding dependencies and the the three the three that actually started have started um getting our attention are the following the one is obviously kyc uh, so i think that a lot like many bigger organizations that actually are keen on funding their dependencies they of course you know want to um you know um have funds and recipients being kyc this is something that we can provide meaning as optional of course uh, and we've been already looking into potential integrations with third parties that you know will provide a service for that obviously we're not intending on building that but this was something that became very obvious from some of our user interviews um the second thing that um that has gotten our attention is that it seems that you know jason showed you this drip list and this idea of funding dependencies uh, one of the things that we've been noticing across the board is that especially within DAOs, there is the desire to actually curate those lists in multi-party mode as we call it instead of actually having you know like a person you know like the leader of the team saying these are the dependencies and these are the, the percentages like you know a lot of DAOs are non-hierarchical organizations that don't have a leader so there's always a process which this process right now has been happening on forums we did it on discord and on a document right so but it seems that there is a need for a uh, certain product features that allow a group of people to curate that list together and this is something that we're really looking to um to tackle uh within the drips app experience as we think that it's very very uh, unique uh, to us uh so yeah so that's the second thing and then the the third thing the third subtle problem that um has like is new to us that we weren't aware of is that it seems that um a lot of people that we talk to especially within the web3 space a lot of well-funded organizations want to deliver want to fund want to do good but it seems that they don't know who within their trees actually needs funding so this is very subtle but like it's something that we've been you know like um uncovering as we're doing these user interviews that, that, and, and has gotten a lot of our attention it seems that you know you want to do good but you actually don't know who needs the money in your ecosystem and this is something that we hope with this curation of drip lists that we will be able to support that we also hope that with the ability to redistribute funds that you know maybe i fund you you don't need the funds but maybe you of course you know pass those funds to certain projects that you know that need the funds right but these are the two the two solutions we have already but it seems that more we would have to do more work there um, and we're thinking about you know signaling ideas where how you as a project can signal that i'm in need of funding and then potentially exposing that to some of the um the 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 the, the projects that depend on you effectively and things like that it's very very early on but i wanted to bring awareness that these are three very interesting problems that we've been uncovering and things that we will actually like to tackle uh, moving forward. Uh, but yeah, I'll pause here. Uh, this was a long update. Um, yeah, that's all for us. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks for the update there, LA. Um, I want to open it for questions, but I really, I, we're conscious of time. We still need to do the foundation org update and the grants update. So I think I'm actually going to ask anybody who has questions for drips to just um, continue them in the chat so that we can try to end on time so we don't go too much over. Um, is that okay with everybody? No, it's fine, LA. There's tons of updates. It's like super awesome to be able to share that demo. Thank you so much. Cool.
Okay, so I'm going to keep it moving along just so we can get everybody out here on time today. Um, and I'm going to uh, briefly run through the foundation org proposal um, alongside Angie. Um, and then Boredom, I'll pass it off for you to do a, a quick grants update. <laughs> and we'll try to not go over too long. Everybody can see my screen? Yes. Yes. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Um, so I will be presenting the Foundation Org quarterly update. Um, these quarterly updates are obviously not as like hefty as the um, like the product orgs, um, but we still want to uh, provide a space to reflect on the work of the different um, committees, marketing, governance, and um, operations to give everybody an idea of what's been going on. So um, the general announcements and updates is that as we just spoke about, we're announcing RadWorks on July 10th or, or around then. Um, so next week is actually going to be like a really big milestone um, with uh, a lot of work from uh, marketing um, and governance and the foundation org contributors. So we're head down, focus on that. Um, a bunch of us are heading to ECC on July 14th for the week. Um, Becca has some really awesome drips and also rad work specific events that are being planned. Um, so uh, we're excited to meet there um, to have some in person time. Um, and a big heads up is that the Radical Dow Discord, which will now become the RadWorks Discord, is about to experience a major reorg, um, which is coming this week in preparation for the announcement next week. Um, you'll hear more about that um, via message over Discord from the contributor leading this, Caro. Um, but next week, um, we should have a much cleaner <laughs> and a much um, more uh, par down uh, Discord experience for all of us to interact with, um, along with um, spaces for uh, inner org and inter org uh, communication as well. And just wanted to highlight what has already been shared in the chat is that uh, we have a new Drips Discord that has spawned as well as the Radical Zulip. Um, and that's where those um, org specific conversations are happening. So I'm going to briefly talk through um, the uh, governance updates and the marketing updates for Sean, since he's um, getting his kids ready um, right now. Um, and then I'll hand it off to Angie to briefly speak to the operation committee updates. So um, the marketing committee right now is in its early establishment page with the stage with a focus on building out a small team with specialized functions and roles. Um, that tie together to create impact um, and execute on some of the priorities that have been lined up. So um, they've been working on a new uh, comprehensive marketing strategy, um, including a brand hierarchy, obviously the brand evolution, the ecosystem approach, positioning and core messaging, not only for Rad Works, but supporting um, Drips and Radical find their new positioning um, and guiding strategies as Drips and Radical start going into these um, next stages of um, exploring adoption um, in public launches. Um, they've also been setting up marketing distribution channels to leverage for DAO wide and org specific marketing campaigns. A bunch of those are launching next week alongside of a ton of content. Um, and I feel like there's going to be a big sigh of relief as we finally kind of have all of these different community, community channels, not only in place, cleaned up, but also active and, and with a purpose. Um, so I think we're all really excited for those marketing distributions to land um, uh, next week. Uh, obviously, the massive priority has been formulating the new brand and messaging framework for the Radical DAO. Anything from um, Alexa working with Brandon to um, decide on the copy to the website to putting together messaging frameworks and brand languages. There's been a ton of work um, that has gone into uh, supporting the brand evolution um, that you'll all be seeing next week. Um, and then coordinating in person online event sponsorships for RadWorks, Strips, and Radical Orgs. Becca has been doing amazing work getting um, uh, Paris uh, in place for all of our contributors. And I think we're really, really, really excited for um, all of the events. We have happy hours, we have dinners, we have um, conferences and talks. I think it's going to be like a really exciting uh, time for everybody in Paris. And I think everybody's really excited um, about the opportunities that the marketing team and, and Becca specifically have been able to put in front of us. So. Um, that's it for marketing. I know that Alexa and Sean are on the call. So if you want to chime in in the chat with any other updates or if you have any questions for them, feel free to drop it there. I'm going to keep zooming through. 
Um, in terms of governance, um, we facilitated our first monthly voting cycle in April. As you know, we updated our governance process uh, via social proposal and now work in monthly voting cycles. And in the last voting cycle, we passed all of these org proposals um, that we are now um, operating within um, and supported the standing up of the Radical and Drips org specifically. Um, we specifically have been supporting the marketing team with the brand evolution um, and focusing in on developing and improving our governance documentation and resources. Um, so this is not only like the creation of a DAO-wide community and governance documentation, a new site that will replace docs.radical.community, um, but cleaning up our discourse, um, stewarding the uh, creation of the DAO-wide purpose statement alongside of the apiary team um, and working on this ratification um, process, as well as coordinating um, the Discord and discourse reorganization that are going to be dropping next week. Um, and we actually just came out of a really, really, really awesome um, workshop with the apiary team in which we are continuing on um, with um, our governance work in light of this, um, you know, recent establishment of our new purpose. Um, and we've actually done like a really big, um, thorough mapping of our governance and goals and initiatives for the next six months to the next two years um, with the apiary team um, and have uh, distilled them down into specific deliverables on a distinct timeline. And we're probably gonna be sharing that uh, publicly within the coming weeks as soon as we make this um, uh, brand evolution live. So um, that's it from governance. I think that me and Shelby can field any questions in the chat and I'll pass it off to Angie uh, to take it over for operations. Yeah, super quickly, uh, just because we didn't really include, we focused on including updates that are really focused on the support we're providing to the DAO at the moment. So um, as many of the orgs have already seen, we published, thanks to the good, great work of Yuval, the financial report for the Radworks ecosystem covering May. Um, please take a look, give us feedback, tell us what would be more useful. Um, the Radworks trademarks are in the midst of being filed, which is very exciting uh, as part of that rebrand effort. Uh, and we're working on hiring a strategic financial partnerships manager. So if you know someone, um, ideally from the Web3 space, who would be good, uh, you know, a good fit for our organization and helping us to manage our liquidity provisioning service partners, uh, please click on the link and uh, forward it to them uh, and get in touch with us um, if uh, they should get in touch with us if they are interested in hire, um, in applying. Uh, so that's sort of it from the operation side, keeping it short. Thank you, Ange. Um, and briefly, we'll speak to our budget update. Um, so the spending is on track. You will see in the report that the foundation org had the highest spend of all the orgs this month. Um, this is because we were actually still paying out radical and drip contracts for the first half of the month due to a later transition for some of the orgs, which we accounted for and buffered for intentionally in our org proposal. Um, and we also had some unforeseen spend, uh, legal spend on additional trademark filings and uh, legal work for um, standing up the radical and drips um, orgs and transitioning them out of the foundation. Um, so you can check out that financial report that um, Yuval from the ops team has uh, put together. I think it's a really great practice that we're getting into now. And I, I think we're excited to continue reporting on a quarterly basis. So um, I'll wrap it up and then, you know, we're already at 5.30. So if you have to drop, um, feel free, but I'll pass it off to Boredom to share the grants updates. Sorry, Boredom, that you're getting <laughs> the last half of the call. Uh, can, can you all hear me? Yep. All right, great. Um, yeah, I'm basically just gonna go over um, the the uh the update that i posted um so somewhat somewhat organically what's happened over the last quarter is we've um grants has started to fund um if you think about the development stack you write your code usually in an ide hosting and management of code is done on something that's a git client and so that's all handled by the core development team um uh, so we don't really touch any of that and then downstream of that, our web, our kind of app or website integrations. Um, so we've kind of organically um, found a niche in, in terms of supporting um, the, the first and third item uh, of that basic uh, flow. Um, and we've also played a role in, in funding uh, governance research. Um, so quick, quickly going down um, some things that we've worked on in the past few months. Um, IDE plugins have been a really big one. Um, that's uh, 
due in part to um, Yorgos's team. Um, so they've been doing a lot of great work, um, basically plugging away at making sure that developers existing workflows. So th the main tools that they use to write their code is uh, interactive de development environment and IDE. Um, and so we're making sure that Radical Heartwood um, can integrate with those tools so that when developers come to use Radical, it feels native and it feels like it's part of their existing workflow. Um, so you can kind of think of this as, as a user onboarding thing in terms of like a product marketing uh, perspective. Um, going back to um, the, the third item, which is more like uh, app or, or website um, integrations, we, we funded DevNode, um, which came out of NAS and some developer DAO folks um, who are interested in building a social network, something along the lines of Stack Overflow and Reddit. Um, and they integrated um, with Radical so that you can actually see um, on their website which Radical repositories are associated with an account so that when someone's answering a question, they can see that this person is, is an expert on so, some topic. Um, then governance research, um, I won't go over this because it was basically all the work by Apiary. Um, we kind of got them set up with their initial funding via grants and then they kind of got some subsumed and, and working a lot more closely with, um, with the governance group. Um, and this is more on the horizon, but going back to this idea of, of product marketing for user onboarding, um, Yorgos' team again um, started building out a GitHub migration tool um, and, and we put down the initial funding for this, so it's not quite done yet. Um, but again, this is just to help developers who already have existing um, uh, repositories on GitHub. It's just gonna be a tool that helps them quickly onboard and transfer all of their, their GitHub data onto, onto Radical. Um, moving through the objectives that we had for this quarter, so recruiting, the original goal was to onboard grantees to more permanent work. Um, Yorgos' team is a great example of this. They've consistently, month over month, uh, returned for grants and gotten funding, and they're working a lot more closely with Heartwood, and it sounds like they they might kind of spin off of grants, possibly, um, uh, and, and work more uh, on a CI project. Um, so I think we're, we're making good headway on that one. Um, in terms of dog fooding, our goal here was to switch 100% of grants over to DRIPS and then switch 100% of our documents over to Rad Radical. Um, since DRIPS v2 launched, 100% of the grants that we funded um, have used DRIPS um, in some form. Um, so I think we we're one of the first users and, and we sent roughly just, just shy of 50,000 USDC over, over DRIPS. Um, we also, another goal is to DRIP to our own dependencies. So we've allocated 4% of the budget for this. Um, we're just holding off until e around ECC to, to kind of align with the DRIPS team uh, as, as they're going through a similar exercise. So we'll probably do it around the same time that they do it. Um, and then in terms of timeline and budget, this is a, a graph that I got from Yuval. Um, but you can see kind of a con more or less consistent uptick. I think this is um, a, lot of, a lot of this work is Yorgos' team. Um, but we've essentially, in the last year, spent half of our budget. Um, assuming everything is the same, I think we probably have between six to maybe 12 months of runway. Um, of course, it, it, if if um, if a grantee uh, spins off into their own org or gets subsumed by another org, obviously the funding that was going to that team um, just falls off a cliff. Um, so that's it's not really a risk, and we're very supportive of that. But that's just how it might play out. But I, I think we have at least six months of runway left. So um, when it runs out, we'll probably just, or when it starts to run out, we'll just come back with a new proposal. Um, that's it. Amazing. Thank you for the update, Fordham. Any quick questions? OK, cool. Then we will wrap there. We're already six minutes over. Um, thank you, everybody who could stay on. That was a that was a hefty call. Um, so we really appreciate everybody's time, um, and we'll see you all next quarter.